Hi, I'm Matt Armstrong, the co-host of the Open Book Audio podcast and co-founder and CEO of OpenBookAudio.com. Wanted to give you a quick tour of my recording booth. This is where I do all of my work. We're also where we record the podcast. Kind of give you an idea of some of the equipment I use, how I have it set up, and what I do to treat the room to make it more, well, to make it sound better for recording. So to start off with, probably the most important piece of equipment is my microphone. You can see this. This is the AKG 414. Uh, great microphone. This is my favorite. I use it for, for all kinds of stuff. Um, I also have a Rode NTG2. This is a shotgun mic. Same type of mic you'd see used on a, uh, on a film shoot, you know, with the boom overhead. Uh, it's, a, it's a good mic as well. Uh, this tends to sound a little bit better on my voice than this does. Uh, so I use this for pretty much everything, but I have used the Rode on occasion with other people when they come in to record as well. Uh, in fact, I think the in entirety of uh, our Open Book Audio Classics book, O Pioneers, was recorded on this mic. Uh, in front of that, I've got just your standard pop filter. What's different about this is this is a, a, a wire mesh. It's not a um, It's not a fabric, kind of like the old embroidery hoop with a fabric inside it. The fabric ones tend to make the sound a little bit muddy for me, for my tastes, and they also um, can start to stink after a while, you get enough spit in them after a while, so I don't like this. If this gets nasty, I just stick it in the dishwasher and, and put it back up and it sounds great. Uh, I also have this little gadget here. This is called a reflection filter, and what this is is just a metal semicircle lined with sound absorptive panels. So that way when I'm recording, I usually record about this far away from the mic. So when I record, I just, the sound doesn't bounce off the back wall and back into the microphone. It gets absorbed in these panels and it, it's just a much cleaner sound. Uh, you see I've got the ever amazing Kindle from, uh, from Amazon. This is actually what I use to record my audiobooks. Um, you don't have to worry about recording the page turn. So this is a big, uh, big friend of mine in the studio. In fact, this is the book I was just working on a few minutes ago. We've also got this nifty little thing. This is what's known as the Transport by uh, Frontier Design Group. This is basic. This controls the recording system wirelessly. So I use a Pro Tools recording system, which I may show in a future video. Um, and there's a little USB dongle you plug into your computer, and then you can use this to control it. So when I'm in here, if I need to stop, rewind, do something over again, this is what I use that for. Behind that, you can see this down here, is a power conditioner. So if you're um, recording something, a lot of times fluorescent lights, computers, other equipment, they can actually introduce a hum or a noise into your power supply that can get picked up by your recording equipment. Uh, so most people put a power conditioner in to help alleviate some of those problems and also to protect your equipment because this, let's face it, some of this equipment can be expensive. So this is my power conditioner and then underneath that is a headphone amp. So what this does is it takes the signal from the recording system in here and gives the person in the booth the control to listen to their own, control their own, their own volume on the headphones. There's four of these. This is back from my days when I used to do a lot more music recording and would have multi multiple folks in recording at the same time. Obviously, this space is not big enough for multiple folks generally, but, uh, but that's where this is from. Then I've just got a standard pair of studio headphones. These are AKG 240s. Uh, K240s, excuse me, and um, great headphones. I've been using these for years. Above and beyond that, the sound, the room is pre is treated to be pretty dead. Um, with audiobook recording and podcasts, especially, you don't want a lot of echo. Yeah, uh, you know, you don't want reverb. You don't want a lot of those effects that you get when you're working on music. So, to that end, I've installed these uh, these panels. They're two feet by four feet. Um, come from a company called ATS Acoustics, and they're basically two inch panels that you hang on the wall, wooden frame, and then they've got a, it's called uh, mineral wool that's in between the frames, and then it's wrapped in a special sound absorption fabric. And uh, these basically just suck the sound in, keep it from bouncing around, which is really, really great for audiobooks. I also have, uh, you can't see it, but I have a carpet on the floor, which is just a, a remnant I got from, you know, the local carpet store for, for 15 bucks sliced it up to fit exactly in the space, but I didn't attach it because I wanted to be able to pull it out 
if I ever wanted to have that echoey effect for some reason. Um, also, you can't see it, but above me are, uh, are more panels like this, but they are at an angle. They're suspended from the ceiling at an angle, so they're not 90 degrees. And that's in order to give us a little bit more... Um, uh, to help keep the sound from bouncing straight back. Uh, a lot of times in sound design and acoustic design, you don't want to have 90 degree angles or, or, or really sharp corners. So the more you can get away from those 90 degree angles, the better it helps. There's also something called a bass trap up in the corner in the back, which you also can't see. It's kind of a, a quarter circle that gets glued right into the, uh, into the space between the wall and the ceiling. And then you can see out there, there's it's some white acoustic fabric that I got. Um, this is just basically, to, and it's removable. I, I did, didn't attach it permanently because I wanted to be able, again, to pull it out if I wanted that echoey sound. So that's basically my studio. This is where most of the work happens and where I have folks come in to read and, uh, and where, we have, where we do the podcast.